In Sangyong's Tivoli XLV, buyers get the luggage space of an expensive family-sized compact crossover for the price of a much smaller model in this segment. Plus, there are higher standards of equipment and safety than you'd expect for the money being asked. It's a strong package. We all like the idea of supersized value, whether it's a milkshake, a supermarket special, or as in this case, a very creditable little crossover. The model in question is Sanyong's Tivoli, the Korean brand's breakthrough contender in the market sector usually dominated by cars like the Nissan Duke and the Renault Captur. Now we're told it can be even better because it can be even bigger. It can be like this. Welcome to the Tivoli XLV. The letters stand for Exciting Lifestyle Vehicle. The exciting bit from Sangyong's point of view lying in the way that this variant considerably increases the scope of the ordinary Tivoli model range's potential customer reach. The standard version of that car has been stretched by 238 millimetres behind the C pillars to create this one, an approach we saw previewed by the brand's XLV Air concept model at the Frankfurt Motor Show in 2015. That design study was a seven-seater, but this production model dispenses with boot-mounted chairs, focusing instead on delivering the largest luggage capacity available in this part of the market. And that's exactly what you get. The kind of small Duke-style crossover you'd usually find for the kind of money being asked by Sanyong here would provide only a tiny super mini-sized boot. In contrast, the trunk in a Tivoli XLV can match and often beat the standard of space you get from a larger, pricier crossover from the family segment where models like Nissan's Qashqai and Skoda's Yeti sit. Even in their most basic entry-level guises, models like these will cost you more than an XLV. And once you equip them to match the standards of a Tivoli, the price difference in Sanyong's favour can become huge. It all sounds quite sensible, doesn't it? After all, many customers shopping in the lower reaches of the crossover class switch their attention from a compact model to something in the family size part of this segment just to get a bigger boot, at which point they discover the large price premium that's necessary to make that move. Sanyong don't think you should have to pay it. Are they right? Does this Tivoli XLV make sense? Let's find out. The Tivoli is representative of a fresh era at Sanyong, it being the first of the brand's models to be built under the ownership of the Indian Mahindra conglomerate. This probably explains why it's so different to most of the other Sanyong models we can remember driving, most of which were tough utilitarian SUVs. Now there's a place for cars like that, but it doesn't lie in the mainstream market, which is where this brand wants a large part of its future range to compete. Hence the reason why there's not much in the Tivoli that's shared with any of the company's other models. Instead, what you get is a car in which everything has been created from scratch. Uh, platform, suspension, engines, the lot. Of course, a few things are familiar like the fact that the single engine on offer in this XLV variant, a 115 PS 1.6 litre diesel, develops more pulling power than most of its rivals and is therefore a much more capable tower, especially if you pay the extra to have this model fitted out with four wheel drive. There's 300 Newton metres of grunt through the gears, allowing this car to lug along 1500 kilograms of braked trailer towing weight. That's not only nearly double the weight that a small crossover like a diesel-powered Renault Captur would be able to tow, it's also significantly more than you'd be able to lug along in a larger model of this kind, say a base diesel Nissan Qashqai. Sanyong simply can't resist, making its vehicles tough, muscular and ready for testing terrain. Of course, the reality is that this Tivoli will spend most of its life taking on the urban jungle rather than the Serengeti, an environment in which, predictably, it feels quite at home, though sharper potholes and speed humps are certainly felt. The optional six-speed auto gearbox we're trying here 
the same sporty Azin transmission that Mini uses, is obviously well suited for the city and is smoother than the rather jerky belt driven CVT auto setup that you find in automatic Nissans and Renaults in this class. Move through its cogs though and you'll find long ratios chosen for economy rather than speed, though 62 miles an hour from rest takes a respectable 12 seconds on the way to a top speed of around 109 miles an hour. Venture beyond the city limits and you'll find that unsurprisingly this lengthier XLV model feels pretty much identical to the standard Tivoli variant to drive, which means that though this isn't one of the sportier compact crossovers you could choose, body control is decent and the steering consistent if a little light. Fortunately you can weight it up by playing with the smart steering system that Sanyong has decided all models should have. Uh, set up delivering three self-explanatory modes, normal, uh, comfort and sport. One optimally weighted setup would for us have been preferable, uh, but at least the adjustability adds an extra element to the driving experience. Like the variable instrument colour schemes you also get a standard on this model, it's a bit of fun, which is what a car like this should really be all about. What you might not expect a compact crossover to be though is in any way really capable when conditions or the terrain gets nasty. This one though might surprise you. Indeed, a key reason why you might consider this Tivoli is down to the fact that it's one of the only small crossovers you can buy that doesn't cost ridiculous money in four-wheel drive guys. The torque on demand system in question isn't quite as sophisticated a setup as you'll find in some of the brand's bigger models, but it'll be quite sufficient for the needs of Tivoli owners who might live in remote areas or perhaps need to tow small boats and caravans. The system only drives the front wheels most of the time, adding in rear wheel traction only when sensors detect a potential loss of grip. Unlike some of its rivals, this particular setup also has a lock mode, selectable should you be on a very loose or slippery surface, or find yourself with this Sanyong somewhere you really shouldn't have ventured in the first place. Here, drive is allocated equally between front and rear wheels to give you the best possible chance of extricating yourself. Committed off-road folk will note the modest 167 millimeters of ground clearance, though that's par for the course with this sort of car. Hill start assist will help you get going up steep slopes with an approach angle of up to 20 degrees, but you'll need to be a little more careful coming down the other side given that the lengthier rear end of this XLV model limits the departure angle to 20.8 degrees. The breakover ramp angle is still creditable though, rated at 17 degrees. Very few other brands in this segment even quote these figures, which says it all really. If there were such a thing as a crossover estate car, and at some point perhaps there will be, then this Tivoli XLV would epitomise it. You see, it isn't a bigger version of the standard Tivoli in the way that, say, a Renault Kajar is a bigger version of a little Renault Capture. There's no wheelbase increase or fundamental floor plan change. Instead, all that's happened here is that Sanyong has stretched the bodywork behind the C pillars by 238 millimetres. It's exactly the same thing that any manufacturer would normally do in creating an estate car from an ordinary family hatch. There's nothing wrong with that, of course. On the contrary, it's a rather sensible thing to do on a small crossover, given that cars of this kind tend to talk about delivering a lifestyle ownership experience, but then don't usually deliver enough boot space to allow buyers to properly live out such a thing. As we'll see, this one does. And it manages to do so without looking as if it's reversed into a greenhouse. In comparison to the standard model, all that's really different is this third lateral window, which has been neatly integrated with the ordinary Tivoli's most prominent profile feature, this unusual arching crease line that appears in the middle of the rear door, then frames the powerful haunches before flowing back into the rear light cluster. At the rear, the differences are harder to spot unless you've both body styles parked alongside one another. In that case, you'd probably notice these revised LED rear lamps and the curious little creasing slashes that flow from them into the centre of the restyled tailgate. 
A big XLV badge takes the place of the usual spaced Tivoli script, and the bumper's been restyled as well in order to create a lower loading lip. The up-spec trim level you have to have on this variant also gives you privacy glass and this neat roof spoiler. Go for one of the styling packs and the effect will be complemented by a contrasting colour, either black or white, for the roof and the door mirrors. At the front, there aren't really any changes at all over the standard model, apart from this black trim panel that sits above the lower grille and widens out to encircle the front fog lamps. So otherwise, it's as you were with what sang hopes is a strong and purposeful look. The width emphasised by a slimline higher grille that's flanked by wing-shaped headlamps, characterised by jewel-like eyebrows that deliver the now de rigueur LED daytime running lights. Time to take a seat at the wheel. If you haven't tried a Tivoli before, you'll find that the cabin's a lot nicer than the kind of thing you'd normally come across in a small, affordable crossover. An impression that's not surprisingly aided enormously by the high spec trim level that XLV buyers have to have. You probably won't be expecting to find the leather upholstery that comes as standard. The supportive seats are heated too. And if you'd previously dismissed Sanyong as a budget brand, you probably won't be expecting the modern ergonomic instrument layout either. The dashboard's soft plastics are nice to the touch. The silver and shiny black plastic inserts are quite well done and the switch gear feels solid and well conceived. True, there are lower quality plastics further down if you care to look for them, but that's the case in almost any car from this category. Overall, you'd have to say that it's a vast step forward from anything this Korean brand has previously delivered. The centre of the fascia is dominated by this informative 7-inch colour touchscreen via which you access the usual stereo, uh, phone, and infotainment features, plus the TomTom sat-nav system that is another standard feature on this model. Now it's a bit odd that this setup doesn't include a DAB radio as standard though, uh, especially given that it does include the kind of HDMI connectivity that we can't imagine many crossover buyers are likely to need. The iPod integration works quite well though, and the whole system is easy to use. Anything this monitor can't tell you will almost certainly be covered by the trip computer that sits between the two deeply cowled dials you view through the leather-stitched three-spoke multifunction steering wheel. You can even change the background colour of these instruments through six different shades depending on your mood. Red, blue, sky blue, yellow, white and black. Getting comfortable is pretty easy, and now that Sanyong has added reach as well as rake adjustment for the steering wheel, there's not much else to criticise, providing you don't object to the rather unusual orange backlighting used on the dual zone air conditioning controls at the bottom of the centre stack. A uh, nice touch incorporated into these is a memory feature that remembers your favourite settings. Now, practicalities, meanwhile, run to generously sized door pockets able to hold a 1.5 litre drinks bottle, a sunglasses holder above the rearview mirror, a glove box that's large enough to hold a laptop, an open recessed area just above that, and a lidded cubby in the transmission tunnel that's big enough to take an iPad. There's also an area ideal for your smartphone just in front of the gear stick and two cup holders just behind it. Time to take a seat in the rear. Now, if you took any normal small Duke class crossover model in this segment and then lengthened it by this amount, the resulting confection would feel a bit odd because you'd have a tiny rear passenger compartment in front of an enormous oversized boot. The reason this approach works here, though, is that the standard Tivoli offers one of the largest back seat areas in the sector. Don't get your hopes up too high. This is, after all, a fairly compact class of car, and passenger room back here hasn't been increased as part of the XLV design changes. Still, we don't think the space on offer in this part of the car is hugely different to what you get in family segment crossover models like Nissan's Qashqai or Seat's Attica. 
thanks to a low central transmission tunnel and a boxy roof line that frees up plenty of headroom, you could fit three adults in with acceptable comfort if you really needed to for short to medium length trips. Seat heating is standard too. Things might have been even better in this regard if the designers had taken the opportunities created by this XLV model's extra length to add in a seat sliding mechanism. Still, even without this feature, there's more room for your knees than you'd usually expect to find in this class of car, and it's nice to find that the seat backs recline by up to 32.5 degrees for greater comfort on longer journeys. We're not quite so keen, though, on Sanyong's preference for these uh, rear seat back bungee cord style mat pockets. Now, though they certainly look fashionable, they're no use for holding smaller items like children's pens. Uh, a couple of cups can be incorporated in these fold-down centre armrest cup holders. Time to move out back and check out this much bigger boot, where the standard Tivoli's 423 litre space has grown to 720 litres here. Now that's a similar capacity to that you'd find in many Qashqai class family crossover models, but substantially more than you'd get from the more compact Duke segment contenders this Sanyong is priced against. You have to take out this removable luggage board to get use of the full quota capacity. When it's in place like this, the capacity falls to 574 litres. Still, we think you'll want this thing in situ because most of the time it's actually quite useful. It can hide valuable items in this underfloor area away from prying eyes, or you can push it up vertically to stop heavy items from sliding forwards against the rear seat backs. The seat backs can be repositioned more vertically if you need to maximise luggage space while still transporting rear seat folk. And that can make all the difference in getting awkwardly sized suitcases to fit. If you are able to push forward the 60-40 split rear bench, you'll find that a huge space can be freed up with a completely flat floor if you've got the luggage board in place. Enough to take a couple of bikes without removing the wheels. And talking of wheels, you don't get a spare one as standard, but the space saver we'd want can be ordered from the options list. If you want to progress from the standard Tivoli body style to this lengthened XLV version, the premium is a pretty reasonable sounding £1,000. Bear in mind though that this bigger variant can only be ordered in a form that replicates the ordinary model's plushest ELX level of trim. And you'll also need to know that it only comes with diesel power. Both those two things explain asking prices that may not seem quite as inexpensive at first glance as you might have hoped. The figures starting from just under £19,000 or around £20,000 if you want to pay the £1,250 premium to get the four-wheel drive derivative. In both cases, there's a £1,000 option of Sanyong's six-speed Azin automatic gearbox if you want it. In the Sanyong range, those sorts of figures seem to position this model very comparably against the brand's existing Corando compact SUV. Indeed, Corando prices start at around £16,000. Actually, though, the comparison isn't especially pertinent. The Corando is a hard-working, no-nonsense product that isn't really aimed at the kind of crossover customer who would be attracted by Tivoli. And in any case, it has a smaller boot than an XLV, costs more to run, and would cost more to buy if you spec it comparably. So let's look at the way that this bigger Tivoli model has been pitched against more realistic crossover rivals from other manufacturers. Does the XLV's pricing deliver the kind of value you'd expect from a brand like this? Look around, then do a bit of number crunching, and it's difficult to doubt it. The only other similarly orientated budget brand alternative in this part of the crossover segment is the MG GS, but at the time of this XLV model's launch, that contender wasn't available in diesel guise. Even with that oversight rectified, an MG GS would still be a smaller car that would cost more with a like-for-like -like spec. 
Look closely at what this Sangyong has to offer, then spread your net more widely for potential rivals. And we think you'll end up agreeing with us that the most natural competitors to a Tivoli XLV lie with small crossovers that aim to straddle the two main areas of this segment. In other words, they offer more space than something super mini based like a Nissan Duke or a Renault Capture but not quite as much room as you'd get from a car of this kind based on a family hatchback, say something like a Nissan Qashqai or a Renault Kajar. If you want some examples of the kinds of contenders we are alluding to here, then think of cars like uh, Mitsubishi's ASX, Suzuki's S-Cross and Skoda's Yeti, and maybe also pricier models like the Mini Countryman and Honda's HRV. None of the competitors I've just mentioned can get anywhere near the luggage capacity delivered by this Sanyong, and only Skoda's Yeti in 2-litre TDI 110 PS form can get anywhere near this Tivoli's pricing. Actually though, to make a fair comparison, you'd have to choose that Czech model in its plushest guise, in which case the price difference to a Tivoli XLV would widen to the best part of £3,500. And that's your most affordable option if you're looking for a representative crossover class rival here. For a diesel version of the Mitsubishi ASX, the Suzuki S-Cross, the Mini Countryman or the Honda HRV, think in terms of needing to find £2,000 to £2,500 more than Sangyong will charge you here. And that's before you'd need to spend thousands more equipping the car in question to this Tivoli standard. The Korean brand would also like this XLV to be seen as an alternative to the fully-fledged family segment crossovers I mentioned earlier. Uh, cars of the Nissan Qashqai or Renault Kajar kind. Maybe also base diesel versions of contenders like Kia's Sportage and Seat's Attica. Models of this sort look better against the Tivoli XLV because the interior space they offer is much more comparable. But of course, the pricing isn't. For the Kia or the Seat, think in terms of having to find £1,000 to £1,500 more than the money Sangyong asks here. With a diesel Qashqai or Kajar, that premium would rise up to around £1,500 to £2,500. And again, that's before you start to add on more money to create equipment levels comparable with this Tivoli. I should finish our comparison comments by pointing out that if you're interested in four-wheel drive, as many towers will be, the pricing difference to this Sangyong will almost certainly be much greater. If you want a diesel four-wheel drive model of any sort in this part of the market, your basic options are A, get yourself a utilitarian Dacia Duster, which when comparably specified to this Tivoli XLV, won't cost you much less and will depreciate much more. B, choose that Sangyong Corando model I mentioned earlier. C, pay around £500 more than you have to find for a comparable Tivoli XLV and get yourself a 4x4 Skoda Yeti. D, pay around £2,000 more to get a 4x4 Kia Sportage or Mini Countryman. Or E, pay around £4,500 more to get an all-wheel drive version of just about any other crossover competitor it's possible to name. That's it. So, you've got the idea. In whatever guise you select, this car offers an awful lot for the money. If that's enough to get you interested, then you're going to want some specifics on the equipment levels on offer here, at which point we think you're going to come away even more impressed. I mentioned earlier that this XLV variant was based on the top spec ELX trim level in the standard Tivoli range. Well, that gets you a huge amount for your money. All the things, in fact, that you probably thought you wouldn't be able to afford on a car of this kind. That means niceties like leather trim, uh, satellite navigation, lovely diamond cut 18 inch alloy wheels, heated front seats, a reversing camera, and even a smart instrument cluster that can change in color to suit your mood. There's also dual zone climate control, front fog lamps, front and rear parking sensors, keyless starting, privacy glass, a rear spoiler, cruise control, auto headlamps and wipers, a removable luggage board for the boot, plush carpet mats and a smart steering system that allows you to alter the feel that you get at the wheel. Plus, of course, there are all the more expected items you'd get from rivals too. Things like Bluetooth phone connectivity, an alarm, 
daytime running lights, a height adjustable driver's seat, power heated mirrors, tinted glass and a trip computer, plus a 7 inch colour infotainment screen from which you work a decent quality 6 speaker stereo with USB and aux in points. Only a DAB tuner is notable by its absence so you can add that as a dealer fit extra. That doesn't leave much scope for options and sure enough there aren't many beyond the usual things like metallic paint and of course a tow bar. We'd want to specify a mini spare wheel in place of the tyre repair kit which is all you're otherwise left with. Beyond that the options are well they're really aesthetic ones. There's a, a choice of gunmetal or black finishes for the 18 inch wheels and there's the My Tivoli personalisation program that gives you a much wider choice of exterior colours and allows you to have the roof finished in a contrast colour either black or white. The My Tivoli program also allows more extrovert types to specify the trendy interior red leather pack. On to safety, another area in which this Tivoli is more than class competitive. Fitted as standard is a full suite of the latest electronic features, six items to be specific. Lane departure warning will alert you if the car quite forcefully drifts out of its lane on the highway. If you merely drift towards the lane delineation lines, a lane keeping assist system will imperceptibly nudge the steering so that you're eased back to the part of the road you should be on. High beam assist will dip your headlights for you automatically in the face of oncoming traffic at night. Uh, traffic sign recognition will picture road signs as you pass and display them on the infotainment screen in the centre of the dash. Uh, forward collision warning will alert you if on the move you're getting too close to the car in front. And uh, autonomous electronic braking will constantly scan the road ahead as you drive for potential collision hazards and automatically brake the car if you don't respond to warnings so as to either completely avoid a collision or decrease its severity. All of this is very nice to have, particularly as the standard Tivoli safety tally was already pretty complete, built around a tough structure, over 70% of which is made from high strength steel. Standard kit within this structure includes twin front, side and curtain airbags, plus a driver's knee bag, Isofix child seat fastenings and a tyre pressure monitoring system. There's also hill start assist, ESP stability control, ARP active rollover protection and four channel anti-lock brakes with HBA hydraulic brake assist to help in emergency stops advertised to following motorists by automatically activating hazard warning flashes. One of the reasons that compact crossover models have been so successful is that they offer SUV style without the associated running costs. Buyers accept that a car of this kind will cost a little more to run than the super mini or family hatch it'll be based upon, but the figures can't be too much higher. On that basis, this Tivoli XLV fits the bill just as well as the standard model does. Its running cost returns aren't in any way class leading, but they're reasonably class competitive. Let's get specific. The 115 PS 1.6 litre diesel engine you have to have delivers 62.8 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 117 grams per kilometre of CO2. Or at least it does as long as you order this model in two wheel drive manual guys. That's about three miles to the gallon and four grams per kilometre less than you get with the standard body shape, which is about the kind of penalty you'd expect given this XLV variant's 50 kilogram weight penalty. Some of the motoring magazines might sniff at efficiency figures uh, of this sort, but the reality is that they're pretty reasonable by class standards. Yes, crossovers like comparable diesel versions of Nissan's Qashqai and Honda's HRV do better, but this Sanyong's figures are close to those of Skoda's Yeti and Seat's Attica, and this Tivoli betters the returns of class favourites, like base diesel versions of the Kia Sportage, uh, the Hyundai Tucson and the Mitsubishi ASX. Arguably even more competitive by class standards are the running cost returns of this Tivoli XLV in four-wheel drive guys. The figures delivered 57.6 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 127 grams per kilometre of CO2 are virtually identical to those you get from a four-wheel drive Skoda Yeti or Nissan Qashqai and easily better the figures you get from four-wheel drive diesel versions of the Kia Sportage and Hyundai Tucson. 
The only caveat you'll need to be aware of here applies to automatic transmission. The Aldertec Azin automatic box used by Sanyong isn't one of those modern dual clutch autos that gets close to the running cost figures of a manual model, so there's quite a running cost penalty to pay if you order it. On the two-wheel drive XLV auto model that we're trying here, the figures are 47.9 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 154 grams per kilometre. Go for an auto box on the four-wheel drive variant and you're looking at 44.8 miles to the gallon and 164 grams per kilometre. What else do you need to know? Residual values? Well, rather surprisingly, these should be better than most drivers in this sector can offer. Independent experts CAP are predicting that after the usual three-year 60,000 mile ownership period, this car should still be worth over 49% of what you paid for it. It's hard to find another car in this class that can get anywhere near this kind of showing. A Nissan Qashqai would return around 43% of its original price, while crossovers like Peugeot's 2008 and Vauxhall's Mokka X only manage around 37 or 38%. What else? Uh, well, insurance is rated at Group 18, unless you go for the four-wheel drive auto variant, which is rated at Group 17. Service intervals are every year or 12,500 miles. Perhaps the best bit, though, is the peace of mind that comes as standard with this car, thanks to this Korean brand's impressively complete five-year limitless mileage warranty. Limitless meaning the lack of the kind of irritating maximum mileage condition that many other brands impose in their small print. As you'd expect, the Sangyong cover deals with all the major mechanical components, including wheel bearings, uh, suspension joints and bushes, steering joints, uh, shock absorbers, and even the audio system. Wearable components such as clutch discs and brake friction materials that could have their life reduced by poor driving are covered for one year or 12,000 miles, while the battery and the paintwork are covered for three years. Not that you're likely to need the limitless cover. Sanyong has subjected this Tivoli to a stringent development program, uh, as stringent as any of its bigger, tougher SUVs would have to undergo. That's seen it tested from temperatures as low as minus 42 degrees in winter to desert heat at over 50 degrees, with brake testing in mountain altitudes of up to 4,000 meters. It's hard to imagine many other small, fashionable crossovers surviving a regime like that for too long. Does this overstuffed market segment really need yet another option? If it offers something genuinely usefully different, then we'd say yes. The Tivoli XLV ticks that box, priced and styled to compete directly with Duke and Capture style mainstream small crossover models, but delivering two things you don't typically get with cars of that kind. Luxurious equipment levels and most importantly, proper family sized luggage space. Also attractive is the fact that this is one of the rare cars in this segment to be able to deliver four-wheel drive at an affordable price, which is one of the reasons a Tivoli would be a preferable choice if you were ever expecting to do a bit of light towing with a car of this kind. Of course, most customers in the compact crossover sector wouldn't know a tow bar from a tie clip. For them, this car will trade on its fashionable looks and plush, well-appointed cabin. Your neighbours won't recognise the badge, but then they'd be unlikely to guess how little you'd paid either. That, as ever with this growing Korean brand, is a key selling point. There may be more dynamic, more efficient choices in this segment, but they're all far pricier than this car when you take into account the space and specification you get. In short, you can see why the Tivoli's been so successful for its maker and why this XLV variant will expand its market reach still further. Bigger brands may want to take note.